Today, I will be reading Bioships by Eddie Eddie. If you have anything to say about our content, please leave a comment. For a new channel, and the feedback would really help us out. Personal log of Ambassador Kurit Karel, transcript of verbal log. Galactic date 128.18.89.06. And they came in dead ships. Ships which should not fly. These unholy carcasses of metal that besmirched the stars. Humans and all they carry with them, dead metal, dead ships, and soon-to-be-dead people. They would learn, as all had before them, to live between the stars, even your ships had to be alive. To truly sail amongst the stars, your ship must be as alive as you are. Our species has long since domesticated a species of squid which can skip between the stars. By combining it with various neurological circuits and uplift technology, our ships are as alive and as smart as we are. They even live longer. I go now to board a human ship, as part of a diplomatic delegation. I must dissuade them of the idea of flying such abominations. Galactic Date 128.18.89.10 There is something wrong with this ship. It should be dead... A cold thing of metal and technology with no life, no heart, and no animus. Yet as I walk along its halls, I can feel its heartbeat through my feet. It has a metal floor, yet the heartbeat is there. It isn't the dull throbbing of our star squids, nor the quiet rustle of Arborex travelling trees. It was a deep bass rumble, a continual low hum that permeated the entire ship. The deck plates vibrated with it. I could feel it shake its way up my legs. When asked about it, I was told that it was the reactor core of the ship. When I asked if it was the ship's heart, they shrugged and said I could call it that, as some of them do. They call this unliving canister of metal a thing with a heart. The air is too dry, and lacks anything that resembles a scent, and it smells processed. The humans call this cleansed air. Galactic Date 128.18.89.16 There is something wrong with this ship. It should be dead, a cold thing with no life and no animus, yet as I walk its halls, the thrum of its heart keeping my taut nerves from snapping, I am becoming ever more aware of the fact that it has veins and nerves. Not of flesh or wood, but of metal and rubber. They carry not just the ship's lifeblood, the energised plasma it runs on, but water, air, and food for its inhabitants? These pipes are always making soft noises, even in the dead of night, and bleeding a little heat. I asked the humans about it, and they said they could insulate the pipes and keep them silent and cold, but they liked the noises and the warmth. Something about old houses and odd noises being comforting. The floor is too hard as well. It feels like walking on rocks. I, I have had to requisition some human footwear to protect my foot pads. Galactic Date 128.18.89.22 There is something wrong with this ship. It should be a dead, cold thing with no animus. Yet the longer I remain here, the more I am certain there is something deep within this ship that is alive. Not as we would understand it, but alive nonetheless. It makes noise like a living being, its reactor hums like a heart, picking up and growing quieter depending on the needs of the ship and her crew. The engineers and technicians know what the noises mean. They can tell if the ship, she, they call this dead thing a she, is damaged or under stress depending on the noises it makes. Just like our star squids make noises when they are in pain. The humans have provided me with what they call a uh, humidifier to keep my cabin air moist and even let me apply scented oils to help with the, uh, the smell. Galactic Date 128.18.89.40 This ship is not alive. I keep telling myself this. There is no animus, no heart, no life. The thrumming I hear vibrating through my foot pads and up my legs is not the beating of a heart, but simply the waste energy of its reactor core bleeding out in vibrations. 
The noises in the walls, the pings, the slugging of liquids. The odd clanks are not the sounds of internal organs or vascular systems, but rather base mechanical sounds. Simple pumps and machines used by the humans to keep the systems in the ship functioning. The fact that the crew know what these noises mean isn't some clever, symbiotic, biological system, but rather just an experienced crew who knows the sound of a machine running poorly. Yet, I feel as safe here as I do aboard one of our bio-ships. The sounds have a rhythm, a specific tenor that tells me that she is running fine, that there is nothing to worry about. I know what the ship in danger sounds like. The reactor core roars loud and the ship shakes as the engines come ready to fight. The sounds of the systems in the walls reach a fever pitch as energy, fuel and resources are moved about the ship. Other sounds fall silent. The noise of running water in pipes as the plumbing is depowered to conserve energy. The human footwear is very comfortable, keeping my feet warm and preventing my fur from becoming too damp or dirty. Galactic date, 128.18.89.44. I need to get off this ship. I'm starting to sense it. Whatever the humans feel that makes them treat the ship as if it's alive, uh, the deep connection they have with it, this sense that they can understand what is going on. We would normally greet our ships when we wake, or if we encountered some kind of sensory organ or servitor organism within them. I have no reason to do this here. The ship is not alive. It has no heart unless you count the reactor. It has no mind unless you count the ship's SI. It has no blood unless you count the plasma that runs through the pipes in the walls. Yet I found myself greeting one of the tiny cleaning robots that roam the corridors today. Much like the humans, I am requesting a transfer from this posting to one where the species I am ambassador to fly ships that actually have a heart. I keep turning off the humidifier to keep my room cooler. The dry air seems to help with the volume of my fur. Galactic date, 128.18.89.75. I have finally been reassigned to a different posting. One where the species fly in bioships, not these alien blocks of metal that have no life, I think. I will be leaving advice for my replacement on how to keep themselves sane and not start to attribute semblance of life to a ship that is, uh, should be, uh, very much dead. Yes, this, this dead, certainly not alive ship requires a more specific mindset to deal with. Uh, one I do not have, uh, no, no. Galactic Date, 128.18.89.95 I have finally disembarked from the human ship, and I am to spend six days aboard a human station while I wait for my new vessel to arrive. I have passed my advice onto my replacement, and assured them that the humidifier serves well, though doesn't need to be on, and that the footwear is required, but is very comfortable. I am still wearing the ones they have provided me. While on the station, I was receiving a shocking amount of attention from the other Anid. Apparently my fur was far more voluminous, and my paw pads far better kept than most others. Both indicators of wealth, status, and mating potential. Having never received such attention before, I was very confused. My accommodation was in the human sector, as there was none available in my own species sector. Every time I visited, I was greeted with mating proposals and similar. As one who has never received such things before, I was shocked and, uh, and confused. My residence in the human sector was acceptable. The sounds were familiar, as was the temperature and humidity. Galactic Date 128.18.90.01 I have finally boarded my new ship. It is strange to be back aboard a bioship. The noises are louder, the air hotter and more humid. I was forced to take my human foot around off, as I was told it might damage the flesh floor. Once I was shown my room, I attempted to settle down to sleep and struggled. There was too much noise. The bed kept shifting under me as I attempted to work out my sleeping preference. I dislike this ship. Galactic Date 128.18.90.05 There is something wrong. 
My, my fur has lost volume. My paw pads are once again in a worse state. I struggle to sleep. The noises sound wrong. I constantly want to tell the ship to be quiet, but I know I can't. And the smell. Oh, gods, the smell. I can't describe it. It is somewhere between rot and sweat. It clings to my fur, and no matter how often I attempt to wash it clean, it only grows worse. Galactic date 128.18.90.08 We are docking at a station, and I have requested that my dockside residence be in the human sector. I miss the cold, dry air, the floors that didn't squish, and quiet, safe noises. The thudding boom of the ship's heart is too loud. The sloshing of the fluids in the walls reminds me all too much of the sounds I heard in the food processing plant. My fur is once again flat and stuck together. My foot pads are damaged. My nose is clogged with the smell of this ship. Galactic date 128.18.90.10. I have walked about the station. It is massive. One of the largest trading stations in the sector. And explored each race's area, and I can confirm that it isn't just that specific bioship. Any race that lives in a heavily biological environment has the same effect on me. The only two I can stand, the first being Arborek, because their area is wood and quiet. I can wear my human footwear and wash the stench from my fur. The second is the human area. The cold, quiet metal, the clean air, the fresh water, the hard floor that doesn't squelch under me. Whenever I walk through my own species sector, I want to rip the flesh from the supporting structures and reveal the cold, clean metal under it. I thought that because the bioforms regrew were antibacterial and killed all microbes and hostile microorganisms, they were clean. I didn't understand what clean meant until humanity and its so-called dead ships. Galactic Date 128.18.90.13 I have tendered my resignation. I cannot handle returning to the bioships again. I will attempt to find a position aboard a human ship. One where I could wear the shoes they gave me, where my fur can be kept clean and fluffy, where the loudest noise the ship makes out of combat is the odd plink as a metal tube cools, where the cleaning devices are basic discs of plastic and ceramic, and not oozing cephalopods that trail antibacterial slime that seeps in into my poor pads and makes them so rough that no female would consider me a mate. My superiors have asked me that I seek psychiatric help when I called our bioship cesspools of filth with a stench worse than a tyrant's ass crack on gym day. I told them they can stuff it. I'm going to a human ship where it's cool, clean, dry and quiet, where I can sleep without the bed shifting below me like some giant amoeba. Galactic Date 128.18.90.20 This is my final entry. I have found a position aboard a human ship as a translator. My superior has registered me as, uh, as mentally unstable after I refuse to seek psychiatric help. I hope that in time I will not be the only one who sees that bioships are a detriment to our species, not only in our physical well-being and emotional state, but also to those aboard as it damages their mating prospects. I, Kurit Kurel, sign off my last log as ambassador to the human species. My next log will be recorded aboard the HFSS Freelancer, as the head of translations and xenolinguistics. And that brings us to the end of today's short story. A big thanks to Eddie Eddie for giving me permission to read this. I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs>